officer he's in charge of GCOM and therefore the party has called for him to resign but further to that we need to make sure that the list is cleaned up so that people the abuse that we had where when you had sympathetic presiding officers to the opposition how unethical they lack integrity the leadership of the AFC and PNC, they lack integrity. If you can't accept that you, your party sought to rig the elections and you defended the rigging, how would people trust you for anything else? And I think that is what Dominic Gaskin was getting at, that people see them as untrustworthy. And he was speaking about particularly the PPP's base, you know, and, and what's, yes, lighting. We have a couple of things. That what's the time frame for doing. the completion of the internal work? Pardon, sorry? The internal work, the electrical, the plumbing, the gas lines. What's the time frame for the completion of that? If no delays from deliveries of materials, it's to be able by October to start doing some testings and all the lines. And October to, next year? Yes, not to year. To just yeah. test the internal? That's not really? going to fly with us, I'm telling you. That is far beyond the project time. And I hope the consultant is making notes well, of because course. we are going to be charging liquidated damages. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Oh, yes, we're here this afternoon. Um, before G here is on phone. Demonstrating our say. concern for a clean voters list and biometrics for the next regional and general election. We have found that the list is overbroken, um, very, very much. And the only way that we can have a clear, the only way we can have a clear um, indication of an outcome of the next regional, general regional election is to use biometrics whereby we can identify persons as they are versus the name that is on the list. We know for a fact that, you know, with the $100,000 cash grant uh, that has been announced, there are thousands of more people that will be getting on the list, which will actually take the numbers of people on that list to over a million persons. And we would know for a fact that if we want to take a head counting the army, by no means we can find from 18 upwards to be the amount of people that, us, that is on the list. And then for this afternoon, we want the Guyanese people to be aware of the fact that the election list that is with GCO for the general reaching election um, sometime in 2025 must be revisited, must be cleansed so that we can have a fair account of the Guyanese adult population for the next voters list which we will use uh, for the general and reaching election 2025. Thank you. As you know, um, we want to ensure that there is uh, strengthening democracy 
uh, transparency and accountability. And so we want the public to ensure that it's a clean and just this environment. Of course, we, the WPA presidential candidate, we spoke about it. The AFC candidate, the Nigerians, and all the Nigerians, Mr. Jabbe himself, for the environment. If you look at the former clip, and our presidential candidate, Mr. Abinant, we all come in for biometrics and the clean voters. And they, you know, one they say, okay, it's going to take some time. And election is, is uh, upcoming and it's within 12 months or so or less. Um, we want to say it's doable in the diaspora as well as in Guyana. We have, shall I say, um, apples, apostles in, in technology. We have uh, Samsung supporters and, shall I say, digital um, disciples. And so they can make it happen. And so you can have that. So we look forward to uh, this protest coming to fruition and we hope that good sense will prevail and we have a clean protest with your family. Whether he's making sense or not, he's just talking. So let's start off with this video here. Let's remind We the are going to make changes with our commissioners. We are going to argue for several changes at GCOM. First of all, we believe that Surge Valley does not have what it takes to deliver free and fair elections. And this is since the last election? Yes, we believe that he has succumbed to pressure that he has allowed this institution to act in a partisan manner, and he is in charge. He can't put the blame on the chief elections officer. He's in charge of GCOM, and therefore the party has called for him to resign. But further to that, we need to make sure that the list is cleaned up so that people, the abuse that we had were when you had sympathetic presiding officers to the opposition, allowing people who should not have voted to vote because they had extra ballots for people who had migrated and were or are dead in the polling stations, that if you have a, a new clean list, that that will minimize that happening because they would not have the ballots in the polling station. Secondly, we need enhanced biometric biometrics because when some presiding officers said like we had some cases in Victoria this is Mr. X just looking at the photo and the polling agent from the party sits across the room or is in a hostile area is afraid to object they allowed a number of people to vote who should not have voted <clears throat> but if you have biometrics enhanced biometrics outside of just a photo ID, it could minimize that happening. They have, we are going to push for electronic vote, voting. Now, you have a system where you can do both. You can vote in the machine, and then it gives you, when you finish voting with the machine, with enhanced biometrics, it, it emits a small paper which shows a ballot, which shows how you voted, which you can then, like some systems have this uh -huh. method. 
which you can then put in the ballot box. Well, I just needed to remind you. You see this man? This man does talk all the time. He don't even remember some of the things he's saying. And so he was speaking then as the leader of the opposition. He's now a vice president. And the man mouth switch around. Paul, you know, you, Paul, you remember this guy here? I, the, the, I remember the face. I'm not sure. When you hear these, um, these things, one is left to wonder. We are left to wonder. And that is why we have to make sure that these um, things are uh, repeated as often as possible to remind people what was the position then. A deal of credibility, because he doesn't say that only now. He said it in the five months period when they were trying to steal the elections. And until now, that is why I asked that you ask Nigel Hughes pointedly that if he believes the PBP rigged the elections because they're telling people on the ground, the AFC, that that's an up new position, that they lost the elections. But when they speak publicly, because they were defending the attempt to rig, they say something else. So people know how unethical. They lack integrity. The leadership of the AFC and PNC, they lack integrity. If you can't accept that you, your party sought to rig the elections and you defended the rigging, how would people trust you for anything else? And I think that is what Dominic Gaskin was getting at, that people see them as untrustworthy. And he was speaking about particularly the PPP's base. You know, you, it's a, it, how would you even go into a village or somewhere to campaign and say to the people there, your party was the one that tried to rig the elections in the last elections? It is, so that's one. Their admission that they sought to rig the elections is not just important um, now for credibility's sake, but it could lend to their rehabilitation. It just shows they're unrepentant. They have had 28 years of stealing elections, and then another five that they sought to steal elections, and they're unrepentant about it. And they, they behave as though they're, they did not try to steal elections. In fact, Hamilton Green said, we should steal the elections to stay in power. He, the, the, the fossil, and he's part of the mix still. They still roll him out from time to time to make some statements. So, and now, in the face of all of that, they're talking about list, where the credibility of the list. And so, he's absolutely right here. And... I think most people know that they will lose the elections. I think they know they will lose the elections. In fact, internally they say this, that they would lose the elections. So they know that. How you? Because it's not just rigging. You broke every one of your promises. What promise can you make now that will force me? You can make any promise, but what promise can you make that would lend me? What can you say to me? To lend me, to lead me to believe that you are serious about implementing it, having just come off a number of years when you just not only did not implement it, but you acted with impunity. The same people like the the Trotmans and the Pato and the others, they were walking on the air. They were walking on the air. Their friends, nobody could, their activists couldn't even talk to them. Like me. I, it didn't change from the leader of the opposition to now. I'm vice president now, or general secretary of the party. Our, my activists have access. They can come still. We still meet with them. They talk to us. We don't leave our people out in the cold because you're in government and you get into office now. We're busier, but yeah, but you find time for your people. They never did because they're elitist. Now, again, they're walking around Nigel Hughes walking around he came upon a pit toilet i know the working people's alliance wpa on monday 
said that it supports the call for a referendum on the 2016 oil contract with ExxonMobil ahead of the 2025 general and regional elections. This was revealed by Dr. David Hines, presidential candidate of the party during the party's virtual press conference. WPA notes recent calls for a referendum on the 2016 oil contract. While we do not oppose such move, we strongly feel that such a referendum must also cover the distribution of the oil resources to the people and a form of governance to be adopted as we transition into a petro state, Dr. Hines said. The party is of the view that the issues are interrelated and therefore the government's contract with ExxonMobil and its partners should not be examined separately from the government's political social contract with the citizens of Guyana. Support for such a referendum is therefore conditional. First, WPA recommends that the 2016 oil contract, the Buxton proposal, and shared governance be put on the ballot. Second, there must be consensus on the questions being put to the electorate in order to avoid the exercise becoming a partisan political football and an ethno-racial census, he told reporters. On Friday, the Alliance for Change, AFC, said it supports calls for a referendum on Exxon's 2016 oil deal with Guyana. Chairman of the party, David Patterson, in response to a question posed by Kayater News, made it clear that the AFC believes that a referendum should be held prior to the 2025 elections. Earlier last week, Vice President Bharat Jagdeo said that a referendum being held at the same time of the 2025 general and regional elections would complicate the voting process. A referendum is a general vote by the electorate on a single political question that has been referred to them for a direct decision. However, Patterson made it clear that oil and gas is not the lone issue that requires a referendum. He pointed to the need to make amendments to certain clauses in the Constitution, and those proposed amendments should be put to a vote via a referendum. We, the AFC, would support a referendum to do all of those things, including matters of oil and gas, being on a referendum even prior to the elections, the AFC chairman said. He reminded that the AFC is part of the Constitution Reform Committee, and matters inclusive of the country's newest natural resource must be discussed. Maybe it will be a good idea to include not only the recommendations from that constitutional committee, and it will be a good idea to include other issues that we do think is necessary. Not only the oil and gas, the issue of death penalty, of course, which I feel strongly about, in the sense that it's something that should not on our books, Patterson said. The AFC member said, too, that if the government is as confident as it claims, then it should be inclined to have one referendum to change all these things before the elections. Amid repeated calls by citizens and other stakeholders for a renegotiation of the lopsided ExxonMobil contract, which his government has stubbornly resisted, Jagdeo, who is also General Secretary of the ruling People's Progressive Party, PPP on Wednesday, sought to rule out any move towards deciding the issue via a referendum at next year's general elections. The government of Guyana, through the Diaspora Unit of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation and the private sector of Guyana, held its second job fair over the weekend in Nickery, Suriname. The event was in partnership with the Private Sector Commission, the Guyana Manufacturing and Services Association, the Upper Quarantine Chamber of Commerce, the Region 5 Chamber of Commerce, and the Burbage Chamber of Commerce and Association Development. A total of 120 delegates representing 30 businesses and agencies participated in the Nickery event. The businesses represented a wide cross-section of sectors and included companies in construction, hospitality, manufacturing, forestry, reinsurance, farming, rice milling, and services. In response to requests from the Guyanese diaspora, the diaspora unit also included representatives from government agencies such as the National Insurance Scheme and the Central Recruitment and Manpower Agency. Members of the Public Accounts Committee, PAC, were in disbelief on Monday when Carl Singh, the regional executive officer of Region 9, revealed that a private contractor who did not complete four industrial projects and owes the government $6 million had been instructed to repay the amount at a rate of $5,000 per month. Upon calculation, it became clear that this repayment plan would result in a staggering 100 years to repay the debt. 
The $6 million divided by $5,000 amounts to 1,200 months, which when divided by 12 months is equivalent to 100 years. During the 67th PAC meeting chaired by Germaine Figuera at the Parliament buildings, the committee discussed findings from the Auditor General's report for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2019. One inquiry particularly focused on alarming unrecovered overpayments in Region 9. Minister of Public Works and Member of Parliament Juan Edgel pointed to paragraph 1479 of the Auditor General's report, which indicated that the regional administration had not recovered overpayments totaling $32.565 million made on industrial contracts from 2015 to 2018. He pressed Singh on whether these overpayments had been recovered and questioned if payments had been made to contractors before work commenced. Leading to the overpayment issue, Edgel stated, the Auditor General said they went into the region and audited certain things. When they measured the works compared to the bills and rates, the contractors received more money than what was executed. How did we pay when the works were not completed? In response, Singh acknowledged that three projects still have outstanding balances and confirmed that one contractor left without completing the work. He admitted that a private contractor is currently repaying $6 million in overpayments at a rate of $5,000 per month. Singh also conceded that payments were made to contractors before work began. Minister Edgill calculated that at this rate, it would take the contractor 100 years to repay the $6 million, prompting uproar among committee members. Chairman Figuera remarked, we're never getting that money because he's definitely not living so long. Singh countered by stating that the contractor is ill, explaining, that is the reason I only got the opportunity now to engage him and ask him to pay these monies. The guy does not make anything. I can't do better than that, sir. At least I am trying. Ultimately, the committee requested that the repayment agreement be renegotiated. Singh responded that he would re-engage with the contractor to seek a more feasible arrangement. In keeping with government's continuous drive to provide Guyana with a well-equipped, resilient firefighting service that prioritizes the safety of its citizens, Ministry of Home Affairs has announced plans to reconstruct the Campbellville Fire Station at Stone Avenue. The invitation for bids has been issued under the National Competitive Bidding NCB procedures, aimed at boosting the GFS operational capabilities in Georgetown. Prospective bidders are invited to peruse the bid documents at the Finance Department, Ministry of Home Affairs, Lot 6 Stabroke, Georgetown, with a non-refundable fee of $3,500. All bids are to be submitted in sealed envelopes, clearly labeled with the project name and marked with the instruction do not open before 9 HRS on November 7, 2024. The designated date for bid opening at the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board building. This reconstruction is part of a broader national initiative to modernize and strengthen Diana's firefighting infrastructure. The government had earmarked $572.8 million in this year budget to enhance the GFS's equipment and fleet, a move that underscores the commitment to improving firefighting capabilities and response times. Investments are also directed toward maintaining and expanding fire hydrant infrastructure, with $60.7 million allocated for the servicing of 150 fire hydrants and the installation of 52 new ones in 2024. This follows the service of 54 hydrants and the installation of 144 hydrants in 2023. The Campbellville Fire Station project aligns with the government's forward-looking security strategy, which also includes exemptions from VAT on fire extinguishers and smoke detectors in the 2024 budget, encouraging greater fire prevention measures nationwide. Additional fire stations are slated for construction in Parica, Vreed and Hoop in Region 3, and near the Chetty Jagan International Airport, reflecting a strategic placement of facilities to bolster response capabilities across critical regions. The GFS has already seen substantial infrastructure upgrades, with a new headquarters on Homestretch Avenue and recently constructed stations in Argyll and Wales. Modern equipment acquisitions, including a skylift, aerodrome firefighting units and a firefighting boat add to the improved readiness of the fire service. Educational initiatives are also being implemented to enhance fire safety awareness within communities and households. 
President Ali tells contractors to mobilize more manpower. Increased shifts to complete maternal pediatric hospital warns of liquidated damages. Contractors have been advised to hasten the construction process at the State of the Art Maternal and Pediatric Hospital in Godvoatin, East Coast Demerara. During a visit to the construction site for the country's maiden pediatric facility, President Dr. Irfan Ali lamented his dissatisfaction at the current pace of works. Pressing the respective technical personnel on site, President Ali quizzed both the contractor and consultant on the deliverables of the external and internal infrastructure of the facility. It was disclosed that the structural frame is 99% complete, while cladding works have also begun. Subcontractors also have begun mobilizing to commence works on the internal infrastructure soon. However, President Ali pointed out that the project is already behind and more manpower and simultaneous work are needed. We are not satisfied with the pace at the moment, and we will have to shift our deadline. It is important that we get this hospital. The contractor informed the president that internal works could be completed by October next year. However, the head of state said, that is not going to fly with us. That is far beyond the project time. We are going to be charging liquidated damages. The facility will have 256 beds, covering 24,000 square meters gross floor areas, and an imaging suite, which will include CT scans, X-rays, and magnetic resonance imaging scanning equipment. This is the highest standard that you will get for pediatric care. The design and construction take into consideration the most modern equipment to match what the hospital is expected to deliver, President Ali said. President Ali keenly pointed out that the government has already begun discussions to train the personnel needed for the state-of-the-art facility we will definitely have to import some specialized skills in the first phase of management of the hospital. We have already started that, looking at various areas that we will need specialists, so they will train our locals, of course. This hospital and the other regional hospitals tell the story of how rapid we have to train our nurses and medical technicians and so on, he said. While featuring many newer technologies, a key component of the facility will be its unique infrastructure, which is envisioned for creating an ambient and conducive environment for children. Because it's a children's hospital, we will have a lot of natural lighting, a lot of gardening, a lot of fountains to make it conducive for children, thus making the healing process far easier, the president said. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Fran Anthony noted that the facility will be outfitted with 24-hour accident and emergency services, alongside several primary care services. Yeah, start mobilizing, they will be starting this month, look and see. So, so they're starting before the end of this month, all the internal work. That's based on the information we have, yeah. Well, the can be based on the information. It's based on the information of the contractor, but things change, see, Mr. President, things change every day. No, no I don't understand it's, it's, it's every day You have a project, sir. You have a project. There's yeah. project planning. There's critical part. Right. According to your project planning and based on the schedule for this project to be completed, before the end of this month, they have to start the internals. The internals will be starting, yes. Are you aware of this? So yes. tell us, tell me from your end. We are starting the screenings, so we are doing now the samples. Like I said, we are the MEP company is mobilizing. They will start performing some works that you could see some physically uh, MEP uh, material from December only, and this is still inside the critical part. So we will start having more movement on the internal uh, working from January, because that's when you have the internal partitions. Everything is with internal partitions and drywall, so most of the MEP works have to go inside. So in the discussions that we had, we had this time, we did for this particular subcontractor to be this one. Yes, and it is. And it's still on, on schedule. Uh, yes, and, and we have lighting, we have a couple of things. That what's the time frame for ready. the completion of the internal work? For that, sorry? The internal works, the electrical, the plumbing, the gas lines. What's the time frame for the completion? If no delays from deliveries of materials, it's to be able by October to start doing some testings and all the lines. And October to, next year? Yes, not this year. To, to, to just yeah. test the internal? That's not really? going to fly with us, I'm telling you. That is far beyond the project time. And I hope the consultant is making notes. Well, of because course. we're going to be charging liquidated damages. Of course, we discuss in conjunction every day. This, this is, this, we're not going to accept that. 
can't accept this going to October. I'll be very clear with you. Three men were arrested on Monday for the alleged murder of Nigel Somersall, a food vendor of Linden, Region 10, Upper Demerara, Burbies. Two other suspects, Jamal Fullington, a 22-year-old construction worker, miner of Victory Valley, Linden, and Shaquan Miller, a 19-year-old pork knocker of Blueberry Hill, Linden, were arrested earlier Monday for questioning concerning the alleged murder. Somersall was reportedly attacked outside of his house early Monday morning. His cousin found Somersall's body lying face down in the yard after she heard gunshots outside. Somersall's body was examined and there was one suspected gunshot wound to his chest and what appeared to be a laceration to his head. He was taken to the Linden Hospital Complex where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Moments after four men carried out a daring robbery at a Clonbrook barbershop on Monday night, Quick action by the police has led to the arrest of one of the suspects. The Guyana police force this morning announced the arrest of one of the suspects. While a photograph of the suspect was released, his name was not released by the police. The police also announced that the car which was used in the robbery has been confiscated after the other suspects abandoned their ride. In its statement, the police said the four robbers first attacked a barbershop in the East Coast Demerara village of Klonberg just before 7 p.m. The four relieved the barber and two of his customers of two gold chains believed to be valued $1 million, two phones, and just over $200,000 in cash. The police said one of the robbers first posed as a customer inquiring about a haircut. Moments after he entered the barbershop, he was joined by the other three suspects who carried out the robbery. After the men made their escape, an alarm was raised and the police were contacted. The car was spotted by a police patrol in the village of Bedeverwachting, and as the police closed in on the car, three of the suspects were seen abandoning the car and running away. The driver of the car was left behind and was arrested by the police. Searches are ongoing for the, the three remaining suspects. Eight Butterfly Sea Moss Powder. Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder? Essential multivitamin powder made just for you. Your story. After retrieving video surveillance recording from other persons in the neighborhood and also from the CCTV camera in the area. Last week, the Ghana police force issued a wanted bulletin for 29-year-old Akibo uh, Bramel, who had been identified as one of the three men who abducted Fico from the parking lot of the Griffin Mall. The wanted man's last known address has been given as Belay Springs in Joshua. The names of the pol two police officers are to be charged for the abduction and robbery uh, are still to be released by the guy tied to the 2025 elections and all of this because of Jack Bill's weekly tantrums I caused them to have got momentum in their sale it's just stupidity but I suspect 
they, want, they hate this weekly tantrum that I throw here. The weekly tantrum. So he wants me to end the weekly tantrum so he could continue to lie about the PVP as they did in the past. Their argument was corrupt.